Thank you, sir, for giving me an opportunity to express my view on the Taxation and Other Laws Bill 2020. This bill is about extending deadlines fixed under various tax laws due to COVID-19 pandemic problems. Donations to PM Cash Fund. The IT Act allows persons to lower their taxable income by availing certain deductions specified in the Act. Deductions can also be claimed against the donations made to certain funds and charitable institutions. The Act amends the IT Act to provide that donations made by a person to the Prime Minister's Citizen Assistance and Relief in Emergency Situation Fund, that is PM Cash Fund, will be eligible for 100% deduction. This implies that an amount equivalent to the donations made by a person to the fund can be deducted from his income while calculating his total income under the IT Act. Under the then existing CSR responsibilities, a company which undertakes development in any locality has to set apart 10% of project cost to utilize towards corporate responsibilities to the local affected by the project. This includes job opportunities, drinking water supply, development of locality, planting trees, etc. The CSR responsibilities are now amended in company law to include donation to PM Cash Fund. Thus, 10% of project cost is hijacked by PM Care Funds instead of the company spending of the locality. Now, by encouraging tax exemption to donate to PM Cares, all companies will be interested in donating PM rather than PM Cares rather than investing in locality, and that, that leads to unemployed locals. The PM Cares Fund is now clearly a private trust with the PM and few ministers or trustees. Can the Parliament exercise its power under Article 265 to grant exemption from tax to the said private trust particularly when its spending is not under parliamentary oversight. Recently, they have said the trust is not amenable to the Parliament Standing Committee on Finance. Sir, I want to know through you whether any representation was received from PM Cash Funds trustees for such exemption. When the bill seeks to ratify the money already collected by PM Cash, where the details of money collected should also be tabled before this house. The objects and reasons mentioned representation from stakeholders. The gist of these representations have not been placed before the house for the members to assess whether the amendments are, tr are in tune with what the nation has asked. You have made everything online and faceless, but the necessary infrastructure has not been put in place. For example, when a company amalgamates, all assessments should be made on the few amalgamated entity. However, there is no functioning software which allows this migration. This means after amalgamation, everything has to be manually registered. So, I would ask the Honorable Minister to update the software and create the digital infrastructure to perform these functions. You are suggesting faceless hearings before the assessment officers and commissioner appeals, but such hearings require a lot of referencing to pages, etc. The Honourable Minister should consider putting in place a virtual court system for these hearings because otherwise the assessees will be driven to courts to say that they were not given proper hearing. You have reduced the TDS from 10% to 7.5 for the taxpayer, but the rate of tax itself has not been reduced to give some relief in this testing times. Essentially, that means that the assessee will have to bear the brunt of it in the next year. The Honorable Finance Minister can consider reducing the tax rate to give some relief to the assessees. Masses. Vivachi Viswas. Appeal spending where writ petition SLP has been filed against order passed under Section 245D of the Act by ITIC before High Court and Supreme Court. The same is pending on 31 10 2020. Can the assessee opt for VSVS? If the clarification is given to departments, and the relief to taxpayers whose case are pending before appellant court. Thank you, sir. If you like this video, please like and share. Subscribe to our channel.